Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your Hurricane Outlook and discussion for Friday, October 26, 2018. Got a little bit to talk about today that I want to run through with you. Uh, things are, you know, busy, but there's nothing threatening. There's always something interesting to talk about, even when, and fortunately, there is nothing threatening land. So we still have Invest Area 95L sitting out here in the subtropics now, for the most part. And, um, you know, basically a 9 out of 10 chance here that this will go on to become a named storm at some point, a subtropical or a tropical storm. That's just a, you know, look at how the structure would be more of the textbook definition than anything. And it will not affect land. You see this frontal system that is impinging on it. There's the system there. And we have shut down all of this part of the Atlantic for the season, which is great. Uh, we have this system coming across some of this, the remnant energy of two systems from the Pacific, Vicente and Willa, and that will combine that extra heat energy. We'll get a low pressure area developing, and then it will move up the coast, and that's going to bring some impacts, which we will get to in just a moment. Looking at the satellite animation here from Tropical Tidbits, the wide shot, this is the area of interest, 95L. And you can see it's kind of stretched out. We're going to take a closer look at that in a moment. Uh, subtropical jet screaming across out of the southeastern Pacific and very strong winds here. This is going to be a sign of what's coming for the wintertime as the El Nino blossoms and does its thing uh, down here closer to the equator. And we'll talk about that more uh, each Monday as we get towards November and then into the off season. Monday will be the big day where we talk about ENSO, which is El Nino Southern Oscillation, what the outlooks are, what it's looking like at the moment, so forth and so on. Always very interesting as we track the ENSO phenomenon. But you see this storm system coming together here, and this will bring some storm conditions. Storm warnings are in effect. We'll take a look at that in a moment. For the Northeast, there could be some tidal flooding as well. But you notice the tropics generally scoured by strong upper level winds we see that down here in the very deep tropics so the air is nice and clear for you folks in the windwards and leewards up through the u.s british virgin islands puerto rico hispaniola all the way over through the greater antilles into the yucatan so if you've got cruises planned at the end of october into november you picked a good time that's for sure so let's take a look and kind of play detective here. This is the vorticity signature. And what should I use? I guess we can use white because that will stand out. This is the vorticity signature for 95L. And it looks sort of like an inverted teardrop. It is oval in shape. It's not very round. It's not amorphous. Uh, and what does amorphous look like? Well, this as an example. So it's got some... Vorticity trying to you know bundle maybe up here on the northern part, but it has some work to do. And you can see that it's interacting with this front, and you can see that vorticity stretched out over thousands of miles. I think though once this lifts out, that this will have a chance to turn west some and probably develop a little bit more. And we can see its organization here on the zoomed in satellite shot here, the high resolution uh, floater that Levi at Tropical Tidbits has come up with. Um, it's better if I zoom back out a little bit and you can see that odd shape to it the sort of oval it's not too odd but it certainly is stretched uh, generally south southeast to north northwest and it's not quite where it needs to be but I'm gonna tell you what look at that deep convection clearly rotating around a common area of low pressure and decent outflow trying to establish it's just in a weird position with this other system sort of like I said impinging on it kind of like standing in a crowded room and you're trying to make you know have your own space and people keep bumping into and into you and and messing up your groove right that's what this is uh, dealing with here 95 L has that uh, frontal system messing up its groove and so once this lifts out this will be able to take over and I think we'll have tropical storm subtropical storm whatever the case may be Oscar so we shall see so this is the um, GFS the North American shot 
And I've switched it up today. Today we're going to look at the um, 10 meter wind and three hour precipitation. And you'll also see the sea level pressure. Um, and let me just kind of outline what's what. <clears throat> this would be Massachusetts right there, New Jersey, Delmarva region, the Carolinas, there's Florida. And we go around the Gulf Coast, just getting you oriented here. The Yucatan, here's Cuba, and I've got to scroll up to start the animation. So remember that, all right? So that is the area that we're going to be watching. So let's put this into motion. This is the next five days. And you can see the shape of the system here. Classic nor'easter, mid-latitude cyclone, and it moves up the east coast here. And see how these isobars are nice and fairly tight. Not like we see in the winter when we get those bomb storms. But there's going to be some wind, 35, 45 miles per hour, maybe higher than that. 50 to 60 in some instances wouldn't surprise me. Uh, not for the Carolinas and probably not for the Virginia Capes, but more uh, New Jersey up through parts of New England, Long Island, etc., the Long Island Sound. Uh, this will be a rather potent storm. It'll get your attention it's going to strip some leaves off the trees and be a blustery, downright windy and stormy Saturday uh, for a good deal of the I-95 corridor and points east to the coast. So just be aware of that. Be mindful if you're traveling on the Garden State Parkway, I-95 out of the Carolinas into the Megalopolis, especially up into New England, southeast New England, the mid-atlantic i mean it's it's gonna pack a little bit of a punch here and i'll show you some of those warnings for this area and then you can also see our little storm over here trying to get going through that five day time period kind of getting more compact and i think we will i think we will have the next name storm come from that system so check this out looking at the broad uh swath you know most of the united states the lower 48 nice and quiet you like to see this especially after the year we have had holy cow um but i'm gonna tell you this area through here and let's zoom in on it the offshore waters and then right up against the coast uh there are going to be some problems so let's start in new jersey and take a look here this is out of mount holly and you get a little bit of a better look at sort of the patchwork of colors here everything from a coastal flood watch for parts of delaware and then you've got your high wind warning for some of these eastern counties, um, northeastern counties along the coast in New Jersey. And then coastal flood warnings up here for a good deal of New York, parts of Jersey, and Long Island. And then you have the high wind warnings in there, et cetera, the storm warning, high surf advisory. So how do you get to see all of this? This is important. Educating you on... You know, well, where can I see this? Because I want you to be aware. So it's real easy. You go to weather.gov. You see that right there, weather.gov. And just use your pointer, your mouse. And you can do this on a tablet. And you just tap it. And, you know, on a mouse or a tablet, Android or iOS, you can scroll, uh, pinch zoom. And then you can tap. It's kind of nice. But anyway, you know, you just click on New Jersey if you're interested in Jersey, for example. Uh, if you wanted to know what's happening up here, in southern Connecticut in the Long Island area well there you go and this gives you a nice broad look at all these different watches and warnings and advisories they're all laid out here you can click on those and they'll tell you more information that's always nice right and then let's get rid of that maybe go away thank you uh, and then you can go in and look for all kinds of interesting things that are listed below okay satellite rivers lakes etc forecast discussion that's always a good one giving you kind of like the hurricane discussions that I read to you from time to time what the forecaster and in this case many forecasters at the local weather service office are thinking so it's all right there at your fingertips and one of those things is looking up flooding information from the gauges that we have and I've zoomed in here already on southeast New Jersey I wanted to show you some of these tide gauges and what they are predicting for the next few days and as you can see at Great Egg Harbor Bay Ocean City in New Jersey you see over on the right there uh, the normal tide the up and down and it gets into the moderate category 
on Saturday afternoon at the high tide. In fact, let's just click on it so I can draw on it because if I move my mouse, it goes away. See? So look here. This is important. That moderate threat right there coming up uh, Saturday afternoon. There's your time frame. And that's going to cause some problems potentially. And we can just go up the coast here uh, to Atlantic City. <clears throat> Sorry, Atlantic City is down here. Uh, New Jersey, Atlantic City coast at Atlantic City Ocean Front. Also, 7.1 feet is what it looks like. It's hard to read from this far back. Uh, yeah, so, you know, take this seriously up here in New Jersey. Barnegat Bay at, at the Barnegat Light. Also, just getting close to the moderate category. Up the coast to spell uh, at Manasquan, okay? That's getting up towards the moderate level. Up here at Sandy Hook, um, close to the moderate level as well. And then you go on up into New York Harbor at the Battery, getting into the minor flood. So, folks, this a warning shot for the nor'easter season that is upon us. And we're going to have periods where there's not much happening and the map is going to look, did I get rid of the map, you know, rather blank. Uh, but then there's going to be times where this is going to be filled in with blizzard warnings, storm warnings, you know, they don't do storm surge warnings for non-tropical systems, but the outlook appears from people that I've been reading, Ben Knoll, Joe Bastardi, and others, that we're going to have a rock and roller kind of a, a winter time coming up. Uh, a rock and roller? <laughs> a, a roller coaster. Can I go back and edit that? Go ahead and laugh if you want to. That's fine. It will be rocking and rolling, though. And, and I don't mean to take this as being uh, exciting and positive because this can have negative effects on people. So I'm going to tone down my... You know, I don't laugh at it as if it's, you know, wonderful news. People who like snow, yeah, maybe. <clears throat> but look, we're going to have periods where it's going to be warm in the east, stormy and cold out west, and then it's going to flip. And it looks like December and February, from the outlooks that I have seen, will be the most active months. So I think this is a warning shot as to what's coming. We're going to have that active southern branch, and we're going to have the polar outbreaks from time to time and these clipper systems that will dive in or low pressure areas that form in the Gulf and right up the coast and we're going to have a stormy period off and on for the eastern United States and that's where most of the people live in the lower 48 so get ready there you have it so all of this is available at your fingertips you just got to know where to look and weather.gov a great resource if you pay your taxes which you should <laughs> uh, this is available to you free of charge well for whatever you paid in taxes there you go that's your subscription rate hey look at this what in the world I want to show you this this is gonna be I'm, I'm putting stuff together from a documentary and I almost forgot you know because of what a season we have had that at the end of May it all got started you remember that especially you subscribers on YouTube and folks watching this elsewhere in social media yeah we got started at the end of May with what is now officially tropical storm Alberto it was a subtropical storm and then they looked at it in the post analysis etc and it was upgraded uh, to tropical storm based on information that they had so forth and so on and I saved all these different images and whatnot on my iPhone and I kinda wanted to show you this because in a way, to me, it's, it's, it was very foretelling, foreboding, and honestly, it's almost haunting, especially now we know what happened after May 28th, 29th, and 30th when Alberto came through the area. This was the radar scope screenshot that I did. There I am right at Panama City Beach, and these are the outer bands of what was uh, subtropical storm Alberto I think even at this point in time it was probably purely tropical and it went on to make landfall uh, somewhere over here I do believe and you know there's Mexico Beach and I, I actually stopped in Mexico Beach uh, as I was coming around the bend here I drove the route all through here and I stopped at Mexico Beach and I flew the quadcopter I sure did this is back on May 28th I think it is and had I only known, right? 
It's a huge image. Had I only known, where's the, is it going to give me the little bar? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, let's just go back to the zoomed out. A uh, couple things you note, you can clearly see this got that concave shape to it. That was very foretelling as to what was coming. Um, and then this shot here really gets me, and I wish that I had remembered that I had this because I was just there a few days ago uh, doing some research and post uh, Michael follow ups, etc. Um, you know, these are all wrecked now. And just incredible how, I don't know, I, it's hard to put my finger on what to call it. You know, it was very ironic. Um, if I had only known that kind of thing, it, it, it's haunting. You know, because some of these buildings are gone. And boy, the tree damage back in here. So at some point over the next couple of months, I'm definitely going back down again, probably in December, to be honest with you, as we see the progress and maybe talk to some people. And I'm going to try, I'm going to take this picture with me, I'm going to print it out and get my quadcopter up. It's not hard to match the shot. Uh, you know, the sky was cloudy that day, so. Maybe I can go on an overcast day, but wouldn't it be amazing to see what it looks like now, some before and after uh, from this point of view? I was just going through everything. I thought I would share this with you because you've been part of the journey here, a lot of you, ever since this, back on the end of May there, as Alberto set the stage, what a lot of people thought was going to be a below average season, and it turned out to be anything but. So we'll talk about that later as well how some of the forecasts panned out, who got it right, who got it wrong. And you'll be surprised. It's not just people who got it wrong in some instances, but some of the greatest computer models in the world. ECMWF, I'm talking about you. A uh, little teaser there for you. I was going back through all my stuff in my iPhone, and I did some screenshots back in April, and the Euro was calling for a below average season, 70% of normal. And we're at 129% of normal, I think, as of right now. So there you go. Even the euro blew it. Uh, whatever. We'll talk about that towards the end of November. Have a great weekend. Sorry to bring you such bad news about the Nor'easter on the East Coast, but at least you're aware, I hope, and you can spread the word and let people know to you know take it easy out there. It's going to be kind of a rough one. All right? I will probably take the next couple of days not off. I'll be working on hurricane stuff, but no updates tomorrow or Sunday. And then I'll be back on Monday, and we'll take a look at ENSO and all sorts of other things as the season begins to get to its end. All right? So between now and then, have a great weekend. Stay safe out there, especially in the east where you got that nor'easter. And uh, I'll talk to you again on Monday. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. Thank you very much for your time and attention. I'll talk to you again at the first of the week.